Coming up in this edition of Ball State Sports Inc.'s Be of Fame, we'll take you out to Ball Diamond with the baseball team and listen to a heartfelt story on the effects of the 2010 Haiti earthquake. We'll also meet an offensive lineman from the football team that now finds himself as an assistant coach. All that and more coming up on SportsLink. Ball State Sports Link's Be a Fan is brought to you by Muncie Nissan. Shift the way you move. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Sports Link's Be a Fan with the best stories in April. Driven by Muncie Nissan. I'm Josh Blessing. And I'm Ashley Reed. Ashley, before we get things started, I want to give a heartfelt thank you and congratulations to everyone here at Sports Link. We've received three Emmy nominations. Yeah. And our own show, Be a Fan, was actually nominated for an Emmy. So another congratulations and a great job to everyone involved in that. And I'll, and I'll be first to admit that we're, we have the easy job here, sitting here we talking. Do. We can ramble, you know, all, like, over and over, but it's the people behind the cameras and our producers that make it all happen. So thank you guys uh, for that. Our, our first story is on Blake Beamer. He always wanted to play college baseball growing up and started as a true freshman. He became the captain on his, his sophomore year and prides himself as a leader and influences team, his teammates on and off the field. Here's his story, produced by Aaron Van Auken, Pat Boylan, and Andrew Boltemeyer. Presented by WMDH. For Blake Beamer, one thing has always been clear. Whether academically or athletically, he has always had a clear vision of his future. Well, I always knew I wanted to play college baseball. In my senior year, I played uh, soccer and baseball. And throughout the fall of my senior year, I went to different baseball camps, tried to go to showcases, tried to put my name out there. I called probably every college coach in the Midwest. So I was coming to Ball State in February, and best decision I've ever made. It really just uh, meant a lot to me. I knew that finally my hard work had paid off a little bit. I knew there was a lot of hard work in the future. It didn't take long for Beamer to make an impact at Ball State. He started as a freshman on a 19-8 MAC team and was named a captain starting his sophomore year. I had known that he had been the captain for the two previous years, uh, which is pretty outstanding uh, for one to be voted by your teammates and then uh, even as a sophomore and a junior. Uh, you don't see that a lot. I think the biggest uh, thing a team captain does is leads and Coach Maloney and I have talked about it and the biggest thing about leadership is influence. You try and influence the guys in the right way, whether it's on the field, off the field, uh, if the guy needs picked up, motivated. Uh, hopefully the team captain does everything. He's uh, supposed to have the heart of a servant and there's no job that's too big or too small that the uh, team captain shouldn't come in I think and I think I've done a pretty good job of that and hopefully and uh, try and teach the freshmen and try and learn from the freshmen. There's stuff you can learn from everybody and that's something that uh, even us seniors and leaders need to understand. It's an honor, it really is. It, uh, we've been vote it's been voted by the team and uh, I've been privi privileged to have the guys to want me as their leader, as a, as a team captain. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the team has to play for each other. I mean, they have to have that buy-in and it usually comes not just from a coach. A coach certainly has uh, tremendous input, but on the flip side, the, the real uh, carrot in the deal is that the guys believe in each other. And um, you, know, you need to have strong leadership within your team to be able to have that. Beamer's dedication has followed him off the field. Blake graduated in three years and is currently working on his master's degree. I mean, here's a kid who's done extremely well in the classroom. He's um, not cut any corners. Um, he got his degree in three years, and now he's working in an um, MBA, I believe. And uh, I mean, that's impressive. I've been fortunate. Uh, I came in with a few credits from high school, and then I've taken a full load every semester, and I just knew if I was going to be here, I might as well take a as many classes as they let me. And if you have time management skills, it, uh, it's been all right. And, I've had professors that helped me, I've had tutoring sessions that have helped, and uh, just hard work and hope it, it pays off. Whenever you're a student athlete, you always hear the term, and I think the term might be overused, just it gets in people's heads that it's a lot harder, and you try just, it's a mental thing. If, if you think it's hard, it'll be hard. But if you understand that you can do both, then I think it'll, you'll be successful and be able to do both. That's impressive, and then be captain of the team, and then be involved in all these other activities. I mean, he's not just with baseball. I mean, this guy's all around every athletic event possible. 
I think I just have a, a love for Ball State. It's a great place, and uh, it's given me so many opportunities, and I want to repay it every way I can, and uh, I'd like to lead by example. I tell my teammates to go to things, and I don't think I could tell them that if I'm not going to go to things, and uh, we should support our other athletes. Hopefully they come out and support us, and uh, it's a thrill watching people that you know compete and do their best, especially for the school that, uh, that we get to represent. Beamer is so active in Ball State athletics that his impact reaches far beyond baseball. This year he was a leader in the Athletics Department's Student Rewards Program, which logs students' attendance at all Ball State sporting events. I don't know if he won it, but if someone beat him, man, they did a heck of a job getting out because this guy's all over the place. Beamer has accomplished more athletically and academically than most in Ball State history, but he's still striving to achieve even more. Blake has big aspirations, and um, you know that's what you got to have. You have high expectations for yourself in order to be successful. I'd like to finish the Masters and uh, have the NBA done, hopefully by hopefully by the summer, at the fall, at the latest. And uh, beyond that, I'd like to be a Division One baseball coach. Hopefully, learn more about the game, how to influence people. You know, for him right now, he wants to be a coach. And uh, I tell him, I said, you might be a CEO. And he wants to be a coach. So if that's what he wants to be, then uh, more power to him. I think he'll be a great coach. I know I'm here for a reason. I know to affect as many people as possible, and I think coaching baseball is my way that I can influence as many people as possible, hopefully change the world a little bit. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Pat Boylan. Beamer is definitely an impressive student athlete. He has a 257 batting average and a perfect field percentage. And the one thing that stood out to me in that story was he graduated in three years and then is already going for his master's. I know for myself, graduating in four years was hard enough, so that's very impressive. Moving on to track, pole vaulting is not the most common event. It takes precision and confidence, and not everyone is fit to do it. Find out how two athletes here at Ball State got their start in pole vaulting and what it takes physically and mentally to compete in what some may think is a dangerous sport. Here's that story produced by Kevin Thurman and Emily Barker. Good. Most would agree you have to be a little crazy to propel your body over a pole, but where do pole vaulters get their start? I did gymnastics in my high school and the gym coach in my high school like saw that I did gymnastics and uh, told me to talk to the pole vault coach because usually gymnasts make good pole vaulters. We had a coach um, at, back at my high school and he told or he had heard that I did like really well with like push-ups and like just like strengthening stuff I guess and so as a joke he came up to me and um, he really wanted me to vault and he was like he asked me, well, can you jump? And I said, yeah. And he's like, well, can you run? And I said, yeah. And then he sarcastically asked me, can you fly? And I was like, of course. It gives you so much body awareness. Like when you go upside down, you have to know where you are, what you're doing, or you're just not going to be able to do the right things at the right times. I think I almost had too much confidence going in. I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, if I can do gymnastics, this will be nothing. Totally not the case. Um, it was more, you had to have like control of everything at one point in order to vault. Um, and that's a hard thing to kind of grasp. To be prepared come competition time, a pole vaulter must show great dedication and precision in honing their craft. I guess before I go, like, I kind of say some, like, words of encouragement, I guess, to myself before I go, just to, like, to, like, get me ready to actually run down the runway. The very first thing, when I would vault, I would kind of, like, replay it in my head. I'd kind of just, like, try to see it before I vault. When I'm running, I think about like keeping my steps, my knees up, like running slow, slow, and then accelerating towards the pit. Like getting my plant up, so like lowering the pull down and planting all the way up. As soon as I plant, you know, create your space. Swinging up as fast as you can, and then as soon as you see that bar, when you look and you can see the crossbar, is when you know you really need to be aggressive at the top and you pull off your pole and you just need to throw your pole and, you know, turn and swing over it. You can't think about it while you're going because like for especially for me like if I think about it while I'm going it just like messes up my whole vault. After going through their routine before every meet Hannah and Tara remain calm and confident in an event that many are too scared to try even once. It's definitely scary like I'm not as scared of it anymore obviously because I'm it's just like natural to me now. If you're too nervous or too anxious or you know something like that what is really hard about pole vaulting is that one little mess up in your run or one little mess up in your plant will mess up your entire vault. If you aren't 100% confident, there's no point in going up. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Kevin Thurman. We've had so many exciting plays so far this school year, so with that, let's send it on over to Pat Boylan with the top five plays of the year. 
Yeah, guys, and frankly, it's been a fantastic past year for both Ball State Athletics and SportsLink Radio. So for the April show, we give you the top five plays from this past year in Ball State Athletics and the radio call that accompanied it. Take a look and a listen. the mouse. He takes the snap, gives to Jawan. Cut, left, right, to the 10, to the 8, still on his feet, to the 5, 2, 1, he will score! Oh, Touchdown, five. Jawan Edwards, and the Cardinals win Good. on an epic run. Exhale, Muncy. Here's Woody, top of the key, 39 seconds left, Defontaine to Justin. Justin's left corner to Fontaine. Fontaine drives, kicks it out. Mid-range jumper from Carter. Good! The Cardinals take the lead. 32 seconds left, 49 to 48. So the Cardinals dance their way to the Sweet 16 of the WNIT for the first time in program history. 53 to 48, our final from Worthen Arena. And the miracle season goes on for Coach Brady Sally and what they call the Mighty Seven. trying to set a screen. Kamenecki grabbed it. The long pass to Skate by himself. Slams it in with the right hand as Hutchinson tried to get back. He could not do so. The chance. Here comes Steven Schott. Onto the hole. The snap is there. It's down. The kick is up. It's on the way. It's got the leg. And it is good! It's good! It's good! Steven Schott puts it through! Some pretty exciting moments. Thank you to Luke Martin and Robin's Apparel for our top five. Well, now let's take a look at some of the top tweets from Ball State athletes from April. For men's volleyball player Jamie and Hartley, just beat the number nine team in the country. So proud of my team. An exciting men's volleyball season ended in the corner finals for the Ball State Cardinals in the Neva tournament. And from the Ball State soccer team, Michelle Block, so proud of Ball State soccer. Just beat Haiti Nash the Haiti national team. Now time to celebrate. We'll see more on the Haiti matchup in just a few moments on Be a Fan. From baseball coach Rich Maloney, big win for the Cardinal faithful against IU. Happy for our guys. What a team victory. Go Cardinals. From Associate Athletic Director Brian Harden, just like Ball State baseball last week, Ball State softball beat Indiana in Bloomington today. The, this spring, Indiana has become the Cardinal State. Baseball and softball helped Ball State go 4-1 and one overall this past year versus IU in the 2012-2013 athletic season. And from BSU Women's Tennis, congrats Courtney Wild, who was all first MAC team, chirp chirp. For more tweets like these and all the best stories in Ball State Athletics, be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Just search Ball State Sports Link. Josh and Ashley. Thanks, Pat. You know, Josh, it was a very exciting year in Ball State Sports. We had the football team. They got to travel to Florida for that bowl game. And then on top of that, the women's team had a nice run in the, NI, the, the women's NIT tournament. So overall, a great, you know, a great season for all Ball State Sports. Now back to soccer. The Haiti soccer team has had an opportunity to, for a new beginning. After battling a horrific earthquake in 2010 and overcoming many obstacles, they are now training in the United States with limited resources. Here's more about the team's involvement with Ball State and their future goals in this story produced by Katie Hargett and Andrew Boltmeyer. To these women, soccer is more than a sport. It's an escape. The, the world is coming to an end. January 12, 2010, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake rocks Port-au-Prince. J'étais en intérieur de ma maison quand ça s'est passé. Et puis je sortais, mais dommage, la maison n'avait rien. On n'avait rien perdu. L'équipe Udeset, or the Haiti National U-17 team, was practicing at the stadium when disaster struck. 
shaken but unharmed. Their head coach was attending meetings at the Soccer Federation. He, along with many of their family and friends, were killed. J'aime mieux quand je je suis à l'entraînement, tout ça. J'aime j'aime pas quand je reste à la maison à rien faire, seulement cuisiner, ne pas aller dormir tout ça. J'aime pas. Accepted, but lives ripped away. At the time, they were training for the World Cup. Panama and the Dominican Republic offered the team a place to train. Soon after, they left for Costa Rica to qualify for the World Cup. They lost, forced to return to Haiti without soccer once again. It was a great privilege for me to come here to play different football here. Even after failing to qualify for the World Cup and their lives changed, they continued to play the sport they love, this time with the help of new head coach Shek Borkowski. For me, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm interested in, in being involved with, with the Federation and with this team. They're pretty resilient individuals. Armed with a new head coach, the team took on what many thought would be impossible in 2010, training for the 2015 World Cup. We, we pretty much lack in everything, you know, we borrow soccer balls still, we uh, borrow some of the equipment, not, of the, not all the girls have their warm-ups because we don't have enough. You know, so it's, it's a challenging environment from the perspective that, you know, the resources are pretty limited. We, we understand that that's where we are and these girls try to, to make the best with what we have. The new direction of Lake Kipwood is set includes training in the United States and a visit to Ball State. I think they're inspirational in the fact that they've gone through so much, so much adversity and uh, they still are, are a quality team and, and they're just still hanging in there and giving 100%. I think they're an example to what our girls need to be like. Even when you have adversity that you still keep on uh, fighting away and keep on moving towards where you want to go and that's exactly what the girls do from, the, from this team. I can't imagine us having something tyrannic like that happen. I think that just shows like how much they love the game. And if they can push through that, I can push through a sprint. <laughs> I think that just shows how much they love it and how passionate they are. And just they keep battling adversity as tough as that is, and they still are here playing today. Not playing was never an option. It's life, and life is soccer. Returning to the field is a symbol to their entire country. On était, on était debout et jouer pour dire aux autres que notre pays n'était pas mort. Il faut qu'on relève et puis reste debout. Ça. Haiti still continues to piece together their country, and the keep food is set plays on. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Katie Hargit. Ashley, it's awesome for them to overcome all those types of obstacles, and it's really awesome to see that they can get that type of resource here at Ball State. Yeah, I'm really hoping to see them compete and do well in that 2015 World Cup. Our next story is on offensive lineman David Raffham. He began as a walk-on. Although he's never saw the playing plain time on the field, off the field he's making an impact as an assistant. He's helping where he can. Here's his story produced by Chris Kaczynski and Chris Rinkle, presented by Fox College Sports. Football is a contact sport. Players sacrificing mind and body for their team. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but heading into what should be his junior season, David Raffin has taken more hits than even the most veteran player without ever playing a snap at Schumann Stadium. Uh, Dave's a great guy and he's, he's goofy and he's funny. He always lifts everybody's spirits up when we need it and uh, he's always there for any of us when we need him. You know, he's the type of guy who's really positive, comes into to, to our meeting room every single day with, with a smile and, and uh, takes a lot off my plate, you know, and, and, uh, and, and just a hard worker, a great kid. You know, I, I think what Dave can honestly say to himself is everything that he's been through and that, has, you know, with his family and then here is that he can help anybody through any situation. I was asked this question, you know, is it worth it a couple times? Uh, whether it's my family members, other friends around campus, you know, is it worth the blood, sweat, and tears? Getting ready to make the jump to college football as a preferred walk-on, Raffin was hit hard before he even strapped on pads as a Ball State Cardinal, blindsided returning home from a family vacation. 
we had just pulled into the driveway and the cops were pretty much there to meet us. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget that moment walking in um, into the house and having the cops talk to us and tell us, and like, you know, we're sorry to inform you, but your son Raymond has passed away earlier this afternoon, overdosed on heroin. Unfortunately, in our town, that's, that's a huge problem. When you lose something like that, when you lose a brother or family member, it, it doesn't hit you right away. It's a real shock. So that actually took a couple months. I was about four weeks into the season here when it really hit me. And I kind of just kind of had a mental breakdown then because, you know, I finally realized, you know, I'm going to be going home for Thanksgiving and he won't be walking through the front door. I, I mean, I didn't want to ask and pry too much because I wanted him to talk to me about it whenever he needed to talk about it. And, and we did come to that point and we talked, but for the most part, I just, I just wanted to be there for him. I wanted to let him know he had a good friend and uh, that I would want him to be that good friend. When it came to football, um, helping me overcome what had happened with my brother, you know, no matter what happened, the, fo the football field was still there. My pads were still there, and they were just sitting there waiting for me, you know, at the end of the day. And I think that was one of the biggest things to know that every time I showed up at the facility and on the field, that I had something to go to when I needed help. Raffin would pass on the lessons of his brother's story by speaking to local schools about the dangers of drug abuse and is currently working on a book chronicling his journey titled Through Hell and Back Again. When you realize that you're making that impact, that your message is getting across these people, I mean, it doesn't make that situation any better, but it really does kind of add that closure to it and say, you know what, I may not be able to change what happened in the past, but I can sure make a difference with what's going to happen in the future with these people. With the excitement of his sophomore season on the horizon, Raffin was feeling confident it would be his year. I was ready, you know, I was ready to go in. I came in that day, there was, there was something about that day I felt like, you know what, we have our first scrimmage tonight, I, I've got a feeling this is going to be a good one. This is where I'm going to make my mark. I go in for last couple plays and get hit to the side by a guy getting tackled and the rest is history there. A spiral fracture uh, had broken completely through on my fibula. Um, I had torn a bunch of ligaments in my ankle and that you know called for immediate surgery. Almost a month after the surgery, we started having an infection that lasted four months. Three months out, a screw broke in the leg. And about seven months out of the surgery, uh, come to find out I have a very, you know, very serious um, tarsal tunnel problem. Uh, we just try to strengthen it as much as possible and, and, and just try to get him back. I mean, you know, it, it didn't go as smoothly as you like, but you know, you, you had to give the time and the effort and, and you, you had to give that guy a chance. How do you not give a guy like Dave Raffin a chance? Probably after the first game uh, against Eastern Michigan, I, I could barely stand uh, for the whole game. I don't know if I can keep doing this. You know, it's too painful. I, I can't walk at the end of the day. Um, I've, got, I've got to start making some changes here. Having lost the dream of playing in a game, Raffin didn't want to lose the sport, which had become a crucial part of his life. I told him immediately that I wish I could have him around every minute of the day. We will find a spot for you. That's the first thing I said to him, because if we lose David Raffin out of this program, shame on us. It is kind of weird. It's, we give him a hard time and call him Coach Raffin just because he doesn't really like it because he still thinks of himself as one of us. But um, we like to give him that hard time. and. Uh, he, he definitely helps a lot. He can, it's, it's cool to see a player out there that's been part of it and has actually played that can kind of help um, give that perspective on things when we need it. He's a part of this position. You know, he's been a part of this position since he's been here. That's a special feeling when you're in that room, when you're an offensive lineman. And, and he didn't want to lose that feeling. It was really important to him that he, that he continue being one of the guys. I thought to myself, you know, is it worth it? And then I think of all the friends that I have, the players, the teammates, all the relationships um, that have really come out of this and I there isn't a place I'd rather be I'm you know every part of this the injury it was so worth it it really was through every turn over every hurdle Raffin has used football to help him persevere and in a sport which requires violence and aggression David Raffin has found peace for Ball State Sports Link I'm Chris Rankel that's all the time we have for the April edition of SportsLink's Be a Fan. If you want to keep up with everything Ball State Athletics, just search us on Facebook 
at Ball State Sports Link and follow us on Twitter at BSU Sports Link. Also, be sure to check us out online at BallStateSports.com slash Sports Link for more stories about our athletes here at Ball State. You can catch us locally on WIPB across the state on Comcast Indiana and nationally on Fox College Sports. For our producers Kevin Thurman and Brad Daly and all of us here at Ball State Sports Link, I'm Josh Blessing. I'm Ashley Reed. Thanks for watching.